I'm Carl Hooker, Director of Instructional Technology for Eanes ISD. This is the Middle School iPad Orientation video. We're sure you're excited about receiving your iPads, but before we do so, let's go over a few ground rules. As middle school students, you are all familiar with the acceptable use policies of the past. Well, now those have been changed to the Responsible Use Guidelines. These new guidelines have middle school specific areas that cover digital citizenship, internet safety, and other age appropriate items when being a responsible student with technology. We want you to love and care for your iPads, but please remember, these are learning tools provided to you by the district. One of the first tips uh, about your iPad is to make sure you don't change the name of the iPad. The name is located under the settings button in the general area under the word name. It should be named the exact same code that's on the back of your iPad. This is what allows you to get apps from us uh, and also helps us whenever you have a lost or stolen iPad. One thing to avoid with your iPad is prolonged exposure to heat. That can either be from leaving it inside a car on a hot summer day, or in this case, cooking it on a barbecue grill. When cleaning your iPad, you'll want to use a dry cloth or shirt sleeve to wipe your iPad clean. Do not spray water or chemicals on your iPad, and please do not submerge your entire iPad underwater. Some of the most common iPad accidents happen when someone trips on the stairs or drops their iPad off their desk. You'll want to avoid dropping your iPad at all costs. And certainly don't attempt to drop it from a 60-foot lift like this guy. 60 feet, all clear. Alright, that definitely does not look good. One final tip. Do not attempt to break your iPad in half over the bottom of a blender and then proceed to stick your iPad in a blender. This will not only destroy your iPad, it'll also destroy your blender. While these may be some extreme examples, one thing you can do to keep your iPad safe is to always leave it inside its case. Should the unthinkable happen and your iPad breaks, you want to immediately take it to the library in the yet-to-be-named Genius Bar. There, your iPad will be assessed for damages, and depending on whether or not you paid for insurance, you'll be given a fee to pay for replacement. Your iPad will not be replaced until you pay this fee. As you'll be setting up your email and access to your home folder and shared drives, you'll want to make sure that you protect your iPad with a passcode lock. To do that, go into Settings, click on General, scroll down to where it says Passcode Lock, and then turn your passcode on. At that point, you'll be prompted to enter a four-digit code, in this case, one, two, three, four, and re-enter that code. That code will be the one you'll use for whenever your iPad goes to sleep. That way, if it's ever recovered, no one will be able to access your personal files that you're already logged into. It's recommended that one of the other features you add to your iPad is the Find My iPad feature. This is located in Settings. Click on iCloud. You'll notice after you log in with your Apple ID that you'll have the option of turning on the Find My iPad feature. While we can find your iPad within the school district walls, this will be very handy if you ever should lose your iPad outside of the school district. Go to iCloud.com to locate your iPad. Before you can download any apps from self-service or the App Store, you'll need to make sure you log in your Apple ID. That's under Settings and under the Store icon. There you can sign in. And if you have an existing Apple ID, here's where you would fill that out. Now, if you don't have an existing Apple ID, I would suggest you go to appleid.apple.com to set up an ID without a credit card. Once you set up your Apple ID or iTunes ID, you can then click on the Self-Service button and notice all the apps that are available to you. Some of these are free apps, but most of these are usually where the district will put paid apps that you can download and redeem for free. I'm going to click on the iMovie app here, and I see I'm given an option to actually install it. It gives you a little overview of what the app is, and then you have an install button. And so you'd click on that to install the app and download it. At that point, you'll be asked for your ID, and then the download will begin. 
you get a warning like this. It tells you you will not be charged for it. You hit install, paste in your password, and you're good to go. Let's take a couple of moments to go over some of the apps you'll be getting that will help you keep yourself and your work organized. iFiles is an app that allows you to access your home or shared folders on your network. It's very important that you back up your work to your home folder should anything happen to your iPad. eBackpack is the district's new content management system. It is the ideal way to collect or send documents from your iPad to your teacher. You can log into eBackpack using your Novell login and going to eens.ebackpack.com or downloading the free eBackpack app. Once in there, you'll notice that all your courses are already loaded. You may also set up your Eens Gmail account to send and receive documents from your teacher. Remember that email is a privilege and that you do follow all the responsible use guidelines when it comes to sending mail messages. You can locate this video as well as training on how to set up your eBackpack, email, iFiles accounts, and other tutorials on the iPad Leap Initiative link on the left hand side of the middle school web pages. Before tucking your iPad in for bed, and reading it a nighttime story. Be sure to plug it in with the appropriate charger. It's important that you show up to school each and every day with your iPad fully charged. This concludes the middle school iPad orientation video. We thank you for watching and we hope that you have a wonderful year learning and interacting and being responsible with your iPad.